Good evening, everyone. How are you guys? I'm so sorry I'm late tonight and I'm never, I, I try to always make sure I make this commitment, so I apologize for being late to you guys. Um, I had login issues getting onto the Dixieville page. Facebook likes to change how we go live and make things better. You know, they like to make things better. So they made it better for us this week. Um, so I'm here. You guys, please come on and let me know you're watching. Let me know you can We're see up to me four. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much to Dixie Bell for sticking with me. We've been on um, messaging for the last 30 minutes trying to get me on. So, but I'm here. I'm, I'm here, right? Better late than never. I was seeing your guys' messages to me as I was trying to get in, and I'm sorry for that. So, anyways, let's get started tonight. It's Thursday night, you guys. My name is Brandy. I'm with Brushed by Brandy. Um, I am a Dixie Bell Paint brand ambassador. And um, I paint with you guys live here on the Dixieville Paint Facebook page every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern. Tonight, 9.30 p.m. A little Eastern. off. Yeah, yeah, a little off. But that's okay. You know, tonight was going to be off anyways because I was actually supposed to fly down to Southern California for the Pinterest conference today. And guess what happened? Does anybody want to guess? Anybody? Bueller. <laughs> yeah, it was canceled. The last minute, literally, our vendors were unloading their vehicles and they canceled the event. So I'm here in sunny Sacramento, California. It is a beautiful day, thanks to Daylight Savings. And um, I'm going to paint with you guys tonight. So this piece that I'm working on behind me is what we're going to do. And I've got just a really simple base on here. And now I need to add some interest to it and really liven it up. So um, I had done, I added this molding on here uh, on the Chalk Mineral Enthusiast page, I think. This is a Would You Bend molding that I added onto this piece. This is also a Would You Bend molding. And then I combined it with some of my Redesign with Prima molds too. So I've got those and we're going to decorate them tonight. So all this will kind of come alive. Right now it's just plain. Um, I've got three colors on here. Caviar, Midnight Sky, and Gravel Road. Really dark, moody colors. So I want to put an image on this piece. I want to use this frame right here to really add what's going to be the interest to my piece. So you guys ready to see what I chose? We're going to put her on here. What do you guys think? Isn't she kind of dramatic? So I'm going to cut her out. This is tissue paper. These are by Recycled. Um, it's R-O-Y-C-Y-C-L-E-D. R-O-Y-C-Y-C-L-E-D is Recycled. And um, these are her 18 pound tissue papers. But I'm going to show you some that I had. And uh, this also will be me making any last minute decision on if I want to change this tissue paper. Because it really sets the mood for my whole piece. I know I don't want a floral. I really wanted like a face on there. Like a... Um, like a classic art face I thought would be really pretty. So this was another contender. Um, Where's my picture? Something like this, only the orientation was wrong for my piece. So I like this black and white image, but um, but then I'd still have space at the bottom. So I could still do it and just put this. I don't know, that's a contender for me actually. Yeah, the spacing's kind of all off. I would be all over the map on that one. It just doesn't fit as well. That was my that was my predicament there. But I do like the coloring and everything with it. I think it would be kind of cool. I just might save that one for another piece. This one is a little bit more Art Deco design. So I didn't feel, and again, I want something larger. And I didn't feel like those went as well with the style of my piece. Same with this one here. This is just coloring is not what I, where I want to go. I'm looking for that, you know, the, the classics, the masters. I want a piece by, and then I've got two of these sheets here, which are, again, that really Art Deco style, and that's not what I'm getting from this piece. Now, really quick, is there a reason you picked the number 18 thickness versus 10? It, it's thicker paper. My personal preference is towards thicker paper, and we're going to talk a lot tonight about why that is. Um why I like working with thicker papers, what I do differently with thicker and thinner papers. This would be kind of cool. This is just a black and white script, but I think it's a little too plain. So anyway, so that's some of what I went through when I was going through choosing. This is another cool one. This has some really cool images on here. The sheet music would be kind of cute, but not quite that dr 
dramatic look that I'm after. Now when you order them, do they actually come in a pack like this? Let me show you how they come. Not like this. This is a whole bunch of papers that I have mixed up, but let me show you how they come. Because I do have some in the package. So they come like this. Where, for example, this... Oh, Jackie says hi. Hi, guys. Sorry that she won't be seeing you. I know, Jackie. Can you believe that? Can you... I cannot believe, I can't believe what's going on. I'm still mind blown. In fact, tonight's question is going to be, have you been to your local Costco or Sam's Club or Big Box shop? And um, what is their current toilet paper situation? For a TP death match? Yeah, <laughs> that's tonight's question. Okay. That's what I really have want Have you know. been involved in Not a TP death match? Not because I'm paranoid about this, but my kids use a lot of toilet paper, so I'm just worried. <laughs> I'm genuinely curious why the TP, but okay. So it comes in a package like this. You can see this is labeled. And this is actually the same one that I'm going to use tonight, but it's new in the package. So this is kind of the combo. And I just kind of wanted to show you my decision-making process when I chose the girl that I'm going to put on here. I also chose her because, um, well, I pulled my color inspiration from her. So if you look at this image, the colors I'm pulling out of her um, in addition to the black that I put on my piece, I'm going to use, this is Dixie Belle chocolate. These are going to be my accent colors when I <laughs> add color to these molds here. Um, Colonel Mustard. This is Rustic Red, which I also did. Where's that screwdriver I had? Oh, here. I did all these drawer sides in Rustic Red. Man, going to five stores to find TP. Are you kidding me? They closed down, uh, someone, and I apologize for not catching the name, someone apologized that the, or it said that the uh, Disney World, Orlando yeah. is closed yeah, down. Yeah, Disney's closed down. So the conference I was supposed to go to is in Southern California, not the, too far from Disneyland, within probably an hour of there. And they closed it down, down this morning. Jackie was supposed to go with me just as the vendors were unloading to set up the big Pinterest conference down there. Now we're going to jump in and out, but as yeah. far as colors, what do yes. you got? So on the body, I have Caviar, Midnight Sky, and Gravel Road. And then I'm showing you right now that I'm going to pull in some, I have Rustic Red on the drawer sides because I really liked the red in her shirt. Those are the accent colors I'm going to pull out. Um, on the molds on this piece, I'm going to pull out some um, Colonel Mustard on the lions here. And that's also going to tie in. She's got some mustard color on her outfit. Um, I'll put some gold on here. And then I've also got out collard greens. So... First things first, let's get her slapped on here. First, I'm gonna slap her on there. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna decide the placement of my tissue paper. So I told you I was gonna talk a little bit about working with thicker and thinner papers. I prefer thicker papers. I just think they're easier to work with. Um, the St. Patrick's Day parades in New Orleans are canceled too. Oh, wow, yeah. yeah, that's everywhere. Yeah, for sure. So the first thing I'm going to do with her is I'm going to give her a rough cut out. I'm just going to get the girl's image out of the background so that I'm not trying to work with this big floppy sheet of paper because she's really what I the only part that I need. And that will help with my placement. So where... Oh, I'm going to grab... I'm going to do a little multi-action here. You continue on your little thing. Do you want me to pick that uh, up with my no, I got it. Uh, <laughs> It's okay. It's really heavy. Sean just has a hernia. <laughs> Here, <laughs> here's where it's from. Yes, these are from Recycled, and she has beautiful paper designs. So now I'm going to, I've got all my drawers in on this piece. They're all pushed in and lined up. I'm going to roughly center this on my molding, and I'm going to use my fingers to kind of crease my paper where my moldings are. Now, I prefer to cut as much of the paper as I can before I put it up. It's a little harder to cut once it's already up because it's got an adhesive attaching it onto your... And then I can decide how yeah. much do I want to cut. I don't want to cut her face off. I really don't. <laughs> trying not to do that. And I, I don't want her eyes. Do you see how if I put them here, they're going to be in the crease of the drawer? So that's the kind of stuff I'm going to watch for. So I'm going to pull her down probably as much as I can. So her facial features are on a full drawer here. I would have to agree with Dixie Bell. With all these closures and everybody having to stay home, it's just more time for lives. And more time for painting. So yep. you guys, you know what is consistent no matter what? Unless you need to clear out furniture um, to make room for your toilet paper stash, 
you know, this is a great time to clear that furniture out. So um, <laughs> order some Dixie Dell paint tonight. This is something you can do while you're stuck inside your house. Make some extra money since you can't go to work. I shouldn't be making a joke out of this, but it's all I can do, guys. Okay, so I like this placement right here. Her face is going to line up and it's going to be on this drawer. Her hair will be in this drawer crevice right here. So I'm just looking, making sure I have no awkward places. Uh, this crevice will fall in with her neck and then this will be about the end. So I'm going to go ahead and tape her up and we're going to cut the paper now. So now that I've got my placement about right, I'm going to go ahead and cut this paper. It's a good thing there's a video and not just audio because it sounds violent. Oh, does it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got her face stuck in this drawer. Um, so I have an X-Acto knife and I'm going to use this and I'm running it along. I put this molding on here. I'm going to run it right into this crease of the molding. And that's where I'm going to make my cut. You definitely want to do this with a razor blade or an X-Acto knife versus trying to do it with like scissors. Because um, these are pretty precise cuts that I'm trying to make here. And this is a thin paper. Tissue paper is thinner. Um, so when I, whoops, she fell a little bit. Let me stick her back on here. Make sure my placement's the same. All right, her eyes aren't in a weird spot. Right there with Darlene, I just don't get why the TP. Why? I don't either. The only reason I'm paranoid about it is because, like I said, I got three kids and they just use a lot of toilet paper. So I'm scared when I do need it, I won't be able to find it. That's the only reason I'm scared. No, I was going to fly today. That's how I feel about it. But but I also don't have like a compromised immune system or any, you know, underlying conditions or anything. So I do understand that there's a risk factor out there. All right. I'm just following the curvature of this because I need to get my piece. And this is something you want to take your time on because if you cut your paper wrong... And then I can just slowly take her apart. And I've kind of got my piece stuck up here. Okay. So I'm going to come over here and cut this. Let's make sure this mm. stays lined up. I'm going to put another piece of tape over there just so it doesn't flop around. It's in case people are quarantined and have to stay at their house. You have enough TP. Oh, oh, okay. Thank you. That's what I, yeah. Why didn't that occur to me? I don't, that's crazy. Why that didn't occur to me. Gotcha. So I had actually gone shopping not that long ago. So we do have a month supply, but so what do you guys think so far? Do you guys like this paper against the black? And then with the lions, I thought it was kind of a really classic look. Still making sure my paper's in the right place before I cut. Makes me nervous to cut. Although I, I at least have a backup sheet of this if I mess it up, right? Can you say that after you finish the cut? Well, I did mess it up a little I don't, bit I don't want to... down here. But let me show you guys something. So coming over from the other direction, I just cut up too high a little bit. So I'm going to come at it from this direction now. And then when I actually adhere the paper, it'll you won't even notice because it's still the same sheet of paper. It's just going to be have a little where I cut it right there. So I'm just going to cut her a little bit larger and then I can fill in that spot. Okay. So, like I said, I, can you guys see this where I made this cut too short? So I just, and then when I actually lay it, I can just piece that back in and you won't notice that I did that. This is also going to be aged and distressed with a little bit of um, waxes and um, decorative accents. So a lot of this will be perfected as I go. So I'm gently going to take this tape off now because I'm ready to adhere her. So I'm going to tape this, tape this up a little bit, get her out of my way. And then I'm going to, tonight I'm doing decoupage with Dixie Belle Clear Coat. So I told you guys I like to use thicker papers a lot. Thicker papers meaning I prefer wallpaper and gift wrap 
and um, thicker papers like that over really thin papers like paper napkins. Um, you'll see I have videos out where I use wallpaper paste for decoupage. I love this for thicker papers because it has a really long work time. So I can um, place my papers a couple times before it really starts to set up. And that's what I like about wallpaper paste. It's meant for hanging wallpaper. Think about it. It's a thick paper. If you need to move wallpaper and put it back up again, you still can. That's what this allows. Now the Dixieville clear coats set up a little bit quicker, but with tissue papers, you cannot place them as many times as you need because it's thinner paper. If you try to pull it back off, it's going to tear the paper. Once it comes in contact with that moisture, you really got to commit a little bit. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. And I'm going to use the clear coat because I, I'm not going to be able to place that paper again anyways. So I use these two interchangeably. You'll see me use wallpaper paste and Dixie Belle clear coat interchangeably. Uh, the clear coat is going to be my adhesive. And I'm also going to use it as a clear coat to seal the top of this once I'm fully done with the piece. So I'm using it tonight as an adhesive. Um, but I like thicker papers for that reason, because you can place them a few different times without them ripping or tearing. Um, they're just easier to work with. So I'm gonna take some of my um, Dixie Belle Clear Coat. This is Satin Clear, and I prefer the Satin Clear for decoupage because um, it goes on with this white, so I can see um, really easily, and it will dry clear but I can see really easily where I've put it. I'm gonna go ahead and put kind of a generous coat on here. This is just raw paint underneath, two coats of raw paint. And I'm gonna put a fairly generous coat and I'm not gonna do the bottom yet. I'm gonna start and really just focus on one small area at a time. Get into some of these crevices up here, up along my mold. Um, but I like to work with the Satin Clear because Satin Clear has a longer open life than Gator Hide. Gator Hide absorbs really quickly and sets up really quickly, um, so it can be harder to decoupage with. Have you ever done the iron method? Yeah, I don't, I don't care for it. It just seems like way too much work for me. So the iron method, basically you put your adhesive on, let it dry, and then come back and you use an iron to, re uh, to heat activate the adhesive. And that just seems like way too much work. If I just lay the paper right in the first place, I don't need to come back and re-iron it. So this, this is the method I choose. I don't get my iron out for anything. I don't even iron my clothes. I was going to say, if you do it, then you can just iron my clothes. Let alone my furniture. So right now I'm just making sure I have really good coverage. I want to make sure all the edges, that's, that's where you really want to make sure, that's where lifting is most likely to happen. So I'm making sure I have really good coverage up into those crevices. All right, now I'm going to take this little piece of tape off and pull her down and I'm going to start attaching her. Now this is a commitment because once you put the tissue paper into there, she's going to start sticking. Paper, when it gets wet, it stretches too. So I'm going to do one area at a time. And this is a little large at the top, but that's okay. Now, the other tool I like to use for decoupage is a brayer. A brayer is a rolling pin tool, and I've got several out here. I've got this one, which is, I got at a thrift store. It's like a kitchen tool. This is a hard brayer, and then I've got a softer silicone one. For this purpose, I'm gonna use the harder one. Oh, here it is. Um, so I use these both, the harder version and the softer, for different purposes, but I'm glad I have them both in my um, stockpile. So because the paper is wet, it gets really fragile. You don't want to um, play with this paper a lot. You don't want to do things that put friction on it because that's where you can cause tearing. So I like that the brayer, I can roll right over the surface, press it into my adhesive and it doesn't, it doesn't cause any friction. I'm not pulling at the paper. I'm just rolling it out naturally. And then I can just press it in. But if I rub my fingers on this even, just that rubbing is going to pull this paper and cause tearing. So this is, again, why I like the 18 pound paper over the 10 pound tissue paper. Those, uh, that just describes the thickness of the paper. I like the thicker ones because I can play with it a little bit more. Thin tissue paper is extremely fragile. So I'm even allowed to like rub my fingers over this and she's not gonna tear. And then I can put the brayer on it and work out any wrinkles. 
and I'm not pulling at this paper, it starts stretching. Now, as the paper dries, as that clear coat underneath dries, it's the paper is going to re shrink again. And that helps pull out any wrinkling or bubbles too. So it's not going to pull out if you give it a really, you know, a really poor application with tons of bubbles, it's not going to pull them all out. But if you've got a few wrinkles in there, it's going to pull some of those back out if they're just small as the paper shrinks back out. So I roll it both directions, vertically and horizontally, just to make sure that I don't have air bubbles underneath there. And obviously this is the main section of my print, so I wanna make sure this is the best adhered part too. And I'm not trying to attach the paper all in, at one time. I'm just working small sections at a time. Like down here, I don't even have an adhesive on yet. What would happen if you used a straight edge, like a credit card or something like you're that? You're going to pull out the paper. Anything that causes friction like that. You're just taking a risk that you can tear your paper. So, um, you know, even some things like this. Like this is a gentle or silicone tool. I might, I could use this to press it into the edges. But I would, even if you're, if you're pulling anything, on the top of your paper the risk of tearing it is it, it's so great I just won't even take the chance and you can feel it too you can feel that it's fragile see at most I'll use this and I'm just pushing the paper into the edges of my molding but I don't feel comfortable using this to actually basically scrape the, scrape top, the paper yeah. even even running my fingers over it I can feel that it's just really fragile and the more that you work it the, the more you're gonna end up with a tear. So you really wanna work it minimally. Even with this roller, give it its rolling, let it dry. So worst case scenario, if you end up flaw with flaws, I can still come back and iron this. After it's dried, if I feel like I've got more flaws than I want, I can actually combine that iron method with this and get out any flaws. So you kind of can use that as a backup method, even if you're just using, like I'm just using the brayer and the clear coat and laying my paper. So where did you get this at, the design? Uh, so these are the available at RoyCycle.com. R-O-Y-C-Y-C-L-E-D. Let me show, yeah, here, you can see her brand on here. Is her website on here? Yeah, it's on here. So I'm gonna show you guys this sticker. Okay, sit there for a second. She's got beautiful designs and it's only a few dollars for a sheet too. So they're reasonably priced. You can also get her stuff off of Zazzle. She has a shop on Zazzle, which is custom papers. So now that I feel good about where this is, got one little spot right here that I'd like to be better. But otherwise it's all nice up into my corners. The discoloration, once, you, once my clear coat dries under that paper, that will disappear and it will have a consistent coloring. I'm gonna use my other brayer for just a minute and roll her out. Yeah, that got one air bubble that I was seeing. So this is another reason why I like to have the two different brayers. They both have different levels of contact and this that got the other one. These are just craft store items, just a craft store brayer. And I like them both for different purposes. So I feel good about this up here. I'm actually not going to cut this until it's dry up here. And the reason is because this is an extremely detailed mold up here. And I want to cut it into all these cra crazy crevices up here. So I'm going to wait actually until that's dry and this is attached. And I will come back and do that part. So now I'm going to come down here and work this section. Same thing. I'm going to put my clear coat on. And the tip to using clear coat, the reason I'm using clear coat and not like Mod Podge, Mod Podge is a water-based adhesive that you get at the craft store. And it is because when you, when you go to put a top coat over Mod Podge, it reactivates what's underneath it and causes bubbles. This clear coat, when I go to clear coat over the top of it, it's not gonna reactivate this layer underneath. 
so I don't have to worry about it causing bubbles after I've already laid the paper. So I think you're about to, that answers my next question is, is months later, could you go back and iron this, use the iron method? But oh. if you put a top coat on it, yes. I guess that defeats you the purpose. You don't want to iron over the top coat because it will get sticky. But if I iron with it just under the paper, then the top coat is going to stay just under the paper. And I can still iron over the top. So as long as the paper is the top surface, you can yes. do it. Yes, yes, exactly. Once I put clear coat over this, no, I do not want to iron it. So I feel like my cut down here at the bottom, I cut it a little tiny bit short. But I have two options there. I could either piece in a small piece of my paper or I'm probably going to just paint it in because I'm going to paint her in anyways. Um, the other thing I'm going to do after this dries is I'm going to take a razor blade and I'm going to cut in between all these drawers. So once this is dry, I'll come back and do that too. Because once it's dry, my, my clear coat is kind of kind of hard. And I can just cut a really clean line in between my drawers. Have you done this often? Yes. I do decoupage a lot. In fact, let me show you guys. I always sneak peek my next piece and I've got it behind me. Bing this bada boom. Behind me is all done with a paper. So this is a thicker paper. This is actually a gift wrap paper. Um, it's thicker, so it laid really it lays pretty easily. It's like hanging wallpaper on a piece of furniture. That's exactly what I would compare it to. Um, and I used the wallpaper adhesive underneath attached my paper and I sprayed gator hide over the top of all of it. So that paper is encapsulated in with this piece now. It's it's a permanent part of my finish. It's wipeable, it's cleanable, it's, um, yeah. So that's all done with the paper too. I, I do use it a lot. So I know there was a question earlier as far as isn't the, basically your clear isn't it water soluble? It is. It is but until it, it dries. It doesn't reactivate that quickly. So, um, Mod Podge reactivates really quickly. So this, it's gonna dry before it has time to reactivate what's underneath. Does that make sense? It, it, um, it doesn't have as long of an open life as that Mod Podge does. So yes, it is water-based. If you leave water sitting on top of it long enough, you will soften it, but it, the new clear coat you're gonna put over top dries faster than, um, it doesn't have time to reactivate. So when you go cut this, are you going to tuck it into the drawers or is it? No, it'll just be a clean razor blade edge along the drawer seams. So it's going, I don't have, I won't have anything to tuck. It's going to run right up to the drawer edge here. It's got, this is a molding. It's going to stay in that molding here. I'm pressing it into there. I'm just using the curvature of my finger. It's a fluted molding on there. Just kind of a, um, I don't know, half circle. I'm just using this to get into the, the curves of that molding. That While that paper has a little bit of stretch to it, I'm pressing it into the corners. And then when I come back and just ride this edge right here. <laughs> Camille, did you just say you sprayed gator hide? I sprayed? You sprayed the gator hide? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's a, it's a legitimate question. You oh, sprayed oh, it. You, you didn't you, you didn't brush it. Weird, like that's a crazy thing. I to always do. look at you weird. What are you yeah, trying to say? No, but that was especially weird. Uh, I just tore my paper a little bit, so I need to learn to not work that paper right there. So yes, it was sprayed even over the paper. Yes, sprayed my gator hide over the paper. Now I have a little bit of clear coat that's here in the crevice that it looks white right now. But it will dry clear and you won't even see that I've got ex excess clear coat. And I'm going to clear coat this anyways when I'm done with it. So I'm just pressing that down the edges. Now, while this paper is wet, I don't want to play with it a whole lot. If I come back when this is dry and I see, oh, there's a little tiny edge right there. I, it didn't get enough clear coat under it. I can put a little bit of clear coat under and over the top of it and re-adhere. So I will go through and check all this after it's dry. You just don't want to overwork your paper while it's wet. So why wouldn't you... If you started from scratch, why wouldn't you put the image on and then put your trim over the image? Um, you could do it that way because when I did this, I was doing a live video. I, this has kind of been a design as I go kind of thing where I wasn't 100% sure what I wanted to go in here. It's kind of evolved for me anyways. 
Um, I could have put stripes in here. I could put a floral in here. I wasn't 100% sure until I started putting the molds on. It started taking on a feeling for me. And yes, Denise, if it's a tiny tear, you can kind of fit the paper back in there. Yes, so that's exactly what I'm doing right here. And I'm going to paint in the little spot. But you don't want to overwork that paper because it tears so easily, especially the longer that it sits wet, the more likely it is to tear. Now, to kind of put the rewind, what's Gator Hide? Gator Hide is a Dixie Belle clear coat. Um, I don't have a container out with me, but it's an alternative to the Dixie Belle clear coat. It's, a, it's their most um, durable clear coat. Um, it's great for surfaces that will get heavy use. So a dining table, a dresser top. Um, it's water resistant versus the other clear coats are water repellent. Um, so it will resist water for a longer time than the regular clear coats will. So that's what I mean. If you're doing something that's going to be heavier use, it's great. For just a dresser front, I don't think it's really necessary. It's kind of overkill, but it sprays beautifully. It sprays beautifully. The satin clear coat's a little bit thicker. It's almost like a gel, which means it brushes on really easily, but it goes through a sprayer. you got to dilute it a little bit more and stir it really well before it'll go through a sprayer well. So Gator Hide just sprays really nicely. So I like her. I'm going to leave her for now and come up here, and I'm going to start working some of these moldings, adding some color in here. Um, I can take this piece of tape off at the top now, trying not to rip my paper, but if I do, that's okay because most of this is going to get cut because it overlaps my mold up here. And I just want to ride the, the you know intricate curvature of this edge when I come back to cut it. So I like her. Now is that uh, would you bend molding? This is, it's a combination of would you bend molding and then molds that I cast out of resin using silicone molds from Redesign with Prima. So this is all would you bend. This heavy duty curve right here, I curved a straight stretch of would you bend to a complete radius. These are would you bend, this is would you bend. So it's about 50-50 mix. These guys are part of the new release from Redesign with Prima. Dixie Belle carries these would you bend ropes, you guys, and if you heat them, you can bend them into any um, shape you want. So in this case, I got it to bend into a full radius here, meaning this circle. I could have made a full circle just out of would you bend. So really quick, just because I see a bunch of questions and comments getting thrown out. When you're spraying gator hide, I don't necessarily think you need to dilute it because it's pretty thin. And it goes on, pre it lays it, really well. It depends on your sprayer. 100% depends on your sprayer, though. So for our That's sprayer, um, for our sprayer, it's a pneumatic sprayer. Um, I also just got a, an Apollo sprayer that I'll be playing around with and getting dilution ratios really nailed down because each individual product in the line is going to have a different dilution ratio. So some things you may need to dilute. 10%, some things may need none. For example, the gloss clear coat is very thin. You may not need to dilute the gloss clear coat. The metallics are very thin compared to the regular paint. You may not need to dilute the metallics. You may need to dilute caviar more than you dilute cotton because caviar has more pigments in it. So each product in the line, even down to the paint colors, are gonna have different dilution ratios. And it really comes with just learning your sprayer but you can see, if you shake in the container, you can see that the satin clear coat fake, shakes really thick. If I go shake the gloss clear coat, it shakes like water. It's really thin. So I think that's just a learning process for learning what your sprayer is. I'm taking an artist brush and I'm dipping into my, um, this is kernel mustard. And I just want to add some color. I feel like she's staring at me. Yeah. She's going to go in, in our room. She'll be watching you all the time as you change. She, feel, and I'm she has that good. kind of glare on her. Like, you, like, I know what you're doing. What are you trying to say? <laughs> she knows. So when I paint in little details like this, I do just take an artist brush. I'm just going to kind of dry brush over the top. And the reason I painted him and attached him already is because I like that it looks like it's a seamless piece with my furniture. And now this color that I'm just putting over top, I'm just going to kind of, you know, I'm going to kind of highlight some of the high points on him. I don't think he needs full color. Oh, yeah. She's very judgy. She's a judgy lady. Yeah, she is. She's definitely got an opinion. So I want to actually get in closer on your lions because 
It just shows the detail. That... Yeah, so I think when you when you put molds on, like this guy up here, you don't even see the detail until you start adding stuff. Oh, look at that shield. That's Like I'm going to show you, for example, because I know I want to put some gold on here. If I just put gold on this crown, all of a sudden you can see, just using my finger, just getting his crown a little bit. But all of a sudden you can see all the details that are in these molds that you couldn't see before. That's just crazy. So I think I want to do, I'm probably going to use a combination on this guy. Oh, heck no, Gary. Gary says she just winked at me. I guess I can put gilding wax on and then it's even like if I club. decide to paint it, I can. Because I think I want to use some red on him, which I could use Anastasia gilding wax. I'm just using my finger and I'm just hitting the high point. See all this detail on the shield. That's crazy. You don't see all that until you start putting the gilding waxes on. And I have a very light coat just on my finger here. But I think I want to use a combination of paint and gilding wax to make the molds come alive. That's what I'm thinking. So right now I'm just painting around this lion's mane. I wish there was a faster way to tell you guys that I get some of these detailed looks, but sometimes I just sit here with an artist brush. And get stared at. Yeah, but honestly, I think this is this is relaxing for me. I'm going to do his face. And I want his mane to be a little bit darker. And then I'll add some like black you know in his eyes and stuff so that detail all pops your hands in the way sorry gosh so i'm probably going to need a second coat of that yellow on there and i'll do his mane and some chocolate i'm going to add some color on this molding this rope molding here too so i'm going to get an even smaller artist brush this guy right here so what does gilding wax do gilding wax is just a metallic wax it is you know it is an oil-based wax the dixie bell waxes are, are gilding waxes are oil-based and it just is a metallic wax that you can put on to bring out details you can use it over the paint it doesn't need to be sealed So I'm just painting his mane with a little bit of chocolate. And what are the colors on the piece? Uh, on the piece so far, I have um, the, the dark black colors are Caviar, Midnight Sky, and Gravel Road. And I use the Gravel Road just to create kind of a lighter frame around here so I can use dark waxes to shade it and really make it have dimension. That was kind of my goal because I wanted it to look like a frame. So I don't want you guys to think when I pulled this piece out, I knew exactly what I was doing. I didn't. It's totally evolved. It will continue to evolve as I look at where I am and think, okay, what does it need next? What's still missing on this piece? And I'll just answer questions as I go. But I don't think we usually start out knowing exactly what it's going to look like when we're done. So that's a rough... You know, rough outline, I think I'll do his claws in the darker color. Because I'm going to put waxes and stuff on this too. But this, all this detail will help tie in with some of the colors that's on my main image that I used. I'd agree with LaDonna that I like the multicolors versus just the singular. Of the black? Of caviar by itself, yeah. Oh, yeah. it. Um, I love caviar on its own, but if you add just a, you know, a little bit of the other colors. So what I'm doing right here is I tore this paper a little bit, and exactly the colors on this spot are the chocolate and the kernel mustard that I'm using. So I'm just going to feather this spot in so that you don't notice. I had a little tear right there. So I'll let that dry and then I can see how it looks. Probably a little more kernel mustard. I'm 
just feathering it in with my finger a little bit. Kind of soften it. I think that looks good. So yeah, I can tell I'm gonna need two coats. And I wanna add a little bit of, I think, I'm thinking collard greens along here to kind of frame her out. And then the legs on this piece, I'm gonna leave in wood. And um, I was totally, sorry, sidetrack you. Is this how you did the uh, surprise piece for Susan? Yes, I sat here with artist brushes. I packed up a whole bunch of my artist brushes and I sat there and painted in all the details. And and that was and then I put, put gilding waxes on it and that was a lot of custom colors too because I didn't have the entire line available like I do at my house. So I mixed and shaded and I painted that in a hotel room. It actually ended up, not in my hotel room, it ended up in Cristana's hotel room. Um, and she gave me her key and I let myself come and go till 5 a.m. That was the really detailed piece I did with the pheasant on it. I feel like I need to look at this head on, so I'm going to turn her a little bit. She's still staring at me. <laughs> you know, it would only bother you if you had a guilty conscience. I do. I think she's gonna punch me. I also had a poster I thought about putting on here, a poster of the girl with the pearl earring, which is an image that I love. And that would have worked too. It, the image was a little bit larger though. Like so I, one more time, three colors in the back, caviar. Caviar, midnight sky, and gravel road, the three darkest colors in the line, all together. You wouldn't think of shading with those three, but they actually work really well together. They look pretty shady. Yeah. Like her. She knows. That's oh, why yeah. She looks like, pretty shady. Yeah, this whole deal is kind of shady. It's about to get violent. So when I stain the legs, I'm going to stain them in a lighter color. And that's because I want the contrast. I, I even got paint on them. And that's okay because I need to sand them down anyways. Um, but I want the contrast of the lighter legs with the darker body. And all the details is where my color is going to come from on this piece. So it doesn't look like a whole lot yet, but they always get there, right? And even if they don't, you just end up redoing them. That's that piece behind me with the decoupage on it. I redid that one. I just wasn't happy with it. So you know what? Start from scratch, go back to it with fresh eyes, and I redid it. So this piece will evolve with me. And so far, you know, everything just has kind of come together. I added the moldings, and that added a little bit. And now I add the image, and that adds something, and it starts... Taking on personality. LaDonna said she stands. Sorry, that's why I'm back here laughing. <laughs> she stares like the pictures during the Scooby-Doo shows. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, you know it was the old man, <laughs> the old cleaning man, the maintenance guy from the theater. Like as you walk by in the hallway, yeah, they it's totally stare him. you down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it was, it's always the old man. So this is a really subtle color, but I think it'll be cool. And then when I add some gilding waxes and stuff on top of here, so. Could you use a poster? Oh to do yeah, like absolutely this? you can use posters. Absolutely, posters are great. And I like posters again, because they usually have thicker paper. So I'm gonna come over here and do this other lion. Just kind of painting in between his mane. This yellow is gonna need two coats. It's not dark enough. I don't wanna see the black underneath. Same as that piece I did with Suzanne. Some of the colors I need, I had to do two coats on. You just let them dry. It doesn't take long for them to dry. So if I was sitting here doing this for an hour, I could come back in, you know, 30 minutes or so, and this thin coat would probably be dry enough that I could put something else over top. I can't talk when I'm doing this. <laughs> like usually I can talk while I'm painting. I can't talk when I'm doing this. The kernel mustard might even look kind of cute around if I kind of dry brush. I'm just going to test it because I haven't painted this part. So the legs were actually part of the piece. Yeah, right? Yes, the legs are original to the piece. I did not add those. So 
I'm just testing out because I had to paint that. I don't think I like that. It's a little too crazy for me. I don't want it to be crazy. I still want it to be very old, um, you know, classic, regal. That's why I wanted a very classic image on the front versus something more modern or... And then what did I do? Oh, the face. So that's kind of where I am on this piece, guys. I'm going to keep going on here, but we attach this image with uh, the clear coat using decoupage, an artist brush to bring out some of the details in my molds. Um, I showed you guys early on that I have some red on the drawer sides too. So once I'm done with this, I think it's all going to tie together. I'll put some gold on my lions, some gold on this piece here. You can see if I... Here, hold on. Before you do the other side of it, let me zoom in so you get to see the kind of the before and after. Yeah, you, you really, I mean, you, all this detail gets lost and I just take my finger and ride the high points. These are fake keyholes, but I'm actually gonna use them to back my hardware. So I drilled out the keyhole so that it goes through to, um, for my screw to fit in and that lock, they'll be hardware backs instead of keyholes. I do the same thing on this side. The black is really pretty against the gold. It stands out really well. I'm going to grab my Anastasia gilding wax because that monkey needs some red on him, right? He should have like... Another thing I wanted to bring up is um, when black is when you are working with black, see I'm getting fingerprints and stuff all over it, it picks up all the oils and stuff really easily. Even if I come and I sand black, because um, I always sand before I put a clear coat on, it's gonna create this white haze right here. I will clean the sanding dust off just with a tack cloth, and then that white haze disappears with the clear coat. So when you do this, or you even go to move your piece and get a little white fingerprint on there or smudge mark or whatever. I'm creating them now. With, you know, I'll put some dust on my finger and create it. Um, it's okay because once this gets clear coated, all that those marks are going to go away. So even when I'm working with black, I don't skip this step right here. And your keyholes were molds, correct? Yes, I cast those with a silicone mold and resin. And we did that, uh, we did some of those, not these exact ones, but we cast the molds on my live last, last week. Where was I last week? <laughs> Here. <laughs> I'm starting to get lost. Um, yes, we cast molds on my live last week. So if you go look for that video, last Thursday on the Dixie Bell page, we cast molds with resin. It's exactly the process I use for those. So what do you guys think? Are you with me on my vision here? Am I crazy? You get it. Randy, you're not getting enough sleep. What's, how are we feeling? It's different, huh? There's always one. A what? There's no broke squirrels? Uh, no broke squirrels on this. No, they're sold out. Broke or <laughs> baroque? Broke squirrels. Um, no, uh, there's no broke squirrels left. People went nuts for them. Okay, uh, good, 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 good. I'm hilarious. I cracked myself up. Mic drop. Walk away. <laughs> that was all I got. So this is dry enough that I'm able to come back and just put a second coat of this yellow on my lion body. Now he looks really bright, but I'm going to put some dark wax on him, some brown and some black wax, and it's going to tone this yellow way down. So they're not going to be so bright and new and shiny when I'm done. Okay, last thing I told you I wanted to put some Anastasia gilding wax on. Look at the color of the Anastasia. I've got some glue Hold in there. But... Isn't that pretty? It's this ruby red color. So one thing I should tell you guys is on the Dixie Bell website, there are 
Um, a lot of the gilding waxes are still on there. Some are not. And that's because they're currently being reformulated, which is going to be awesome. That's a really pretty color against the black. It's okay. So he's definitely going to have some red on him. I'll have to decide where exactly. I'll surprise you guys when you see the final version. And I'm probably going to add a little bit of paint to it too. But anyway, you can see how the gilding waxes really bring out the detail in the molds that are lost when it's just one solid color under there. All right, you guys, I'm going to get off tonight. Thank you again for waiting for me. Um, if you guys haven't already, Kristana and I started a podcast this week, and our first episode is up on YouTube and Spotify. It will be on other podcast locations, too. Eventually, we're getting there. It's going to be on iTunes, Google um, Podcasts, all of those. Um, but it's just our first episode that came out. We're going to come out with one every week. So I hope you guys will subscribe and uh, follow there. But that will be a fun thing to listen to just as you're driving in the car. And um, we'll talk about all things painting, the business side, um, painting tips, talking about brands. We'll have guests, all kinds of stuff. And um, her and I have great chemistry, so we get along really well. It's been fun to do. So go find us at the Paintcast podcast on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, and go check out that episode. Let us know what you think. Um, my name is Brandy. I'm with Brushed by Brandy. You can follow me on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and YouTube. And as always, I put a link above in the post. You can use that to find your local retailer if you want to order any of the supplies that we used tonight from Dixie Bell. Um, I also get a percentage of sales made through that link. So I always appreciate when you guys buy from there too. Um, but I'll let you guys go. Have a great weekend. Stay home. Stay safe. Guard your toilet paper with your life. It's been fun. I'll see you next week.